Hello, 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 and welcome from a very sunny Scotland to another rock pooling vlog. We are here featuring the lovely, wonderful ocean. Ocean, how are you? It's sounding pretty good. So, I'm here at Arbroath. We usually rock pool at that end, we're at the other end today, and we're here about two ish hours before low tide. And the low tide isn't massive, it's, it's not going to go out very far, which means that. I'm just going to meander close to the edge of the sea, not actually go in the sea, but close to the edge of the sea and kind of explore the rock pools as they get exposed. It's gorgeous at this particular spot which I came here because you see all these like lovely little waterfalls that kind of goes down in layers that all like flow to the sea so I thought it would be a really nice way to like, you know, follow the sea today and follow the waterfalls and um, Oh, and just have a magnificent time. It's gorgeous. The sound of that sea is absolutely fantastic. And I'm so excited to see what we find. We could find anything. We could even find aliens. It's a possibility. It's not on my to-do list. It's not on my checklist, but I'll let you know if we do. Okay, so the last time I went rock pooling on the last rock pooling vlog, we saw thousands, literally thousands of these tiny juvenile flatfish. Now from that last video, it has only been a day, this is the next day for me, and I, I had to bring back something to try and show you this species in more detail. Now before I do this, I just want a quick disclaimer. On my channel I am more of an advocate for leaving rock pooling species where they are. I love filming them in the wild and I don't really feel a desire to, especially when it comes to species like the fish and that, to, to catch them and look at them in close detail because actually I can see that through my camera in the natural environment. However, I do know that for educational purposes that actually bringing species out, having a look at it, is really valuable and really useful. And during my undergrad we used to go rock pooling and put everything in, well not everything, but things in white trays so that we can look at it in more detail and see the identification features and learn from it. So in that respect I am for um, delicately and very gently getting species out to have um, a proper look. Now there are good ways and bad ways to do this. If it's a small species you want to be avoiding touching them with your hands at all. So I have got this just clear plastic Tupperware and I'm pretty sure this is going to be super easy because there's so many. I'm just going to scoop it through the water and try and catch um, an individual in here. That way I can show you guys and we can look at it on the camera and it shouldn't be in any way too stressful for the species. Um, so let's see what these gorgeous little fat fish look like up close. Okay so typically when I went to look um, they'd all disappeared so it took me a couple of minutes to find them, but it was really easy to catch one scoop and this, this little fella went in. Oh, I thought I lost him then, that's how clear they are. So in here is our gorgeous little flatfish. Where'd he go? There he is. 
<gasps> oh my god, that is so cool. Look at him. He's so tiny and transparent. The way they swim is just fantastic. I keep losing him just because that's how good camouflage they have. I kept thinking that why are they swimming around? Because I don't understand why they don't just lay flat on the ground. But looking at it from the side, actually, it's almost impossible to see it when it's swimming. It's really tough. They're so well blended in. That's fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna get some footage of this guy so we don't keep him for too long. that was just an incredible encounter with that very very special fish which we named herbert um or well, i named herbert anyway um yeah it was fascinating again i don't like catching species and you could see that he kind of wanted to swim out but actually when i put him in the water he didn't swim away straight away he decided to stay in the in the tub for a bit but from that i've got footage for other videos i can now see the details and photos of him so i can go back now and id it so that i can kind of record what species is doing so well and why you know what species is, is doing all of this um breeding it could be multiple flatfish species but we're just gonna id this one i've even got some slow motion footage of it swimming which is fantastic because flatfish swim in a very special way and having that footage to be able to use for educational purposes and to share that is is really great and a really just special moment that we got to see that species up close and they are so small literally no bigger than my fingertip they are just babies they can't be I don't know how big flatfish start off, but they can't be more than a week or two old, surely. Um, but I'm gonna look it up. We'll talk more about flatfish in a video, I think, just separately because they are incredible. As I remember, I do have a video on flatfish evolution. So you can check that out, but that was great. But now the tide is definitely still going down. And we're gonna just continue to explore and see what else we can find and uh, leave the baby flatfish to their wonderful lives. And hopefully they will grow up big and strong. So I have just found a lobster burrow. Let me show you. Ooh, it's a bit windy now. So I'm backing off. Let's move so that we can see it. I don't, oh, oh, look.
I don't know if he's gonna come out. So those red feelers, and I did get a little glimpse of a claw off from a lobster. Lobsters live in burrows, so they like to find either a rock that doesn't move, but ideally, like here, this rock is attached to the ground, but it's been eroded, so there's like a burrow underneath it. They love to find places like that to live, which means that lobsters are really tricky to film, unless you find them wandering around like I have, and you can check out in this video. But in that video, he also disappears back into his burrow, but then he does come out eventually. So I don't know if he's got his feelers out. His feelers are there to see if I'm food, or it was to see if it was safe to come out. So I've put my camera there, and I'm watching it now. Oh, we can see a claw. Oh, Now, it may well be that he just doesn't want to come out, he's just guarding his home. So, I'm going to sit here for a bit and see if we can get him to come out, but I I can't go, pull him out. I don't want to pull him out. And also, I like my fingers. Um, so, <laughs> um, I'll let you know. <laughs> while it lasted but um i think that lobster doesn't want to make friends and we'll leave him be because he's not going to come out for anyone watching this that is a fan of catching crabs are really confident catching crabs as you should be crabs can't massively hurt you unless they're giant um and there's videos which i'll link to here about how to hold crabs if anyone is thinking i could do that with a lobster 100 percent do not do not ever try and get a lobster, especially not out of a burrow. A lobster can take your finger off. It really can. They are strong and powerful and they are, in that sense, dangerous. So it's best not to mess with them. I have once, just by reaction, accidentally picked up a lobster. Um, it was very small. I picked up a rock no bigger than maybe the palm, maybe my hand, hand size, I lifted up a rock and there was a lobster on it and it jumped. It made me jump. I dropped the rock and because I dropped the rock, I didn't know if I dropped the rock on the lobster. So I like immediately went to try and pick up the lobster to check it was okay. And it was no bigger than maybe three quarters of my hands, teeny weeny. And as soon as I went to pick it up, it, the power in it was immense. I and then I dropped the lobster. I was only picked it up like not even a centimeter off the floor because I was like, whoa. And just that tiny little lobster, it's, it's just a different level of power. So please, please don't ever pick up lobsters. It's not a good idea. Um, but admire them from afar because they are truly beautiful. Um, 
I think we've got some claws and an antenna and maybe some of those little dot things that are on its shell and, and that's about it from that lobster footage. Bless. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to play you the clip I just filmed. I sound a bit despondent. I was a bit, I suppose, despondent about how much I'd found today. And then I ended it, well, you'll see. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so it's definitely not summer yet because it's still getting chilly. Um, <laughs> today's rock pulling has been one of those days where I have done so much more behind the scenes than I have actually caught on camera because it's been it's been difficult to find species so we started if you look right way down there and I don't and I don't usually go there um the only times I've gone there is when it's really low tide and I realized I must have just stuck to the kelp beds because you couldn't get to the kelp beds this time and I came further up and it's just like pebbles like loads and loads of pebbles like I suppose like these pebbles but if you imagine those pebbles but just that like not these like rocks and all the different topography and i walked from there to here and barely found anything i was turning over rocks i was looking at stuff there was like the basics maybe but i mean even the little flatfish which are everywhere i only saw two on my walk over um and I just think that maybe that part of the shore, these those rocks are probably big enough to be picked up. And maybe that during just any days rougher than this, those rocks are being picked up and chucked and turned and, and like landing on things. And so that part of the shore doesn't have a lot of like seaweeds, doesn't have a lot of like small stuff. And because of that, you, you're left with basically a lot less. So it took me a good like hour and a half to like walk across the shore hoping to find something which was slightly frustrating which then left us to the lobster there's also been a couple of times where i've missed species i'm not my reflexes maybe are not up to scratch i need to practice them more um where i've gone to film it and it's disappeared before that however i have just sat here and um i've been having my lunch and this rock pool here excuse the noise it is not me as some motorbikes go past um <laughs> uh and in that one rock pool where i've been having some food i've seen hermit crabs uh, a butterfish wiggle across a common shrimp um some hermit crabs are having a proper fight as well and so um what else is there was there more i think there was more 
but anyway this tiny rock pool had a lot more in than i thought at the first start and i was sitting there for a good 10 20 minutes um and stuff just started to like walk around and get used to me and come out of the cracks kind of thing literally so although maybe i felt like they that didn't have a lot in and it probably had a lot less than this um it doesn't mean that there's not life there so i'm just gonna end today's video with rather than me talking for the end i'm just gonna film this little rock pool a bit and then i think we might have to leave it there okay so i end that on i'm just gonna film this rock pool and i'm still here same same rock pool and then i spot something i have never seen before and i am so grateful that i didn't stand on it because i would have been heartbroken if i'd stood in it and i've just walked around the rock pool and thank goodness we found baby fish eggs oh my goodness i'm naming half of them nemo no i'm naming half of them coral and half of them marlin and one of them nemo oh my goodness i've never seen baby fish eggs before this is fantastic it's fascinating they are gorgeous they are delicate they are so unbelievably cute and tiny but just look at them that where is it there that thing is what i saw i can't believe i spotted it oh my goodness
sleep in rather than just you know continuing to show that i was like you know i don't know just carried on like normal because it just goes to show how incredible <laughs> what balls are and this happens every time every time i get like mildly frustrated which does happen every now and again when especially if i've like seen something that i want to film and i can't get it or or you just i don't know you you just get a bit despondent i mean that just goes to show how it's every rock pool you've got to check and 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 i do I mean, I, it pays off in the end i, I mean i've been here since nine o'clock this morning it's now half past two so <laughs> uh, and, and that was just like the final rock pool and there was such an incredible encounter so privileged to see those beautiful baby fish something that i have never seen before wasn't on my list to look for in fact i'd seen someone on instagram recently post these gorgeous pictures of baby fish and i thought it was incredible and fantastic and didn't really know that they would find them in rock pools it's loose so they, i don't know if they just rattle around in the sea and get picked up but it's fantastic this this one rock pool where i stopped for lunch it was going to be my last rock pool I would have, like, I trudged all the way, checking all of these rock pools, lifting up all these rocks from the other side, and I just kept thinking, oh, it's got to be something awesome. And it was just leading me to find these beautiful baby fish. Oh, that's so exciting. I'm so happy I have that. And that is going to be so handy for, like, showing people baby fish and, like, footage and just having that as a resource there for me to dip into. Oh, my goodness. They were, I mean, they were so cute. They were so cute. I know I say lots of things are cute. I agree that lots of things are cute, but that was oh, so cute. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I'm just, well, I mean, um, I'll wander in and check the rest of the rock pools, but um, let me say, let me end it here. And uh, if I find anything else more exciting, I'll. I'll Spit out anyway. Okay. <laughs> Have a fantastic week, everyone. I'll see you next week with another rock pulling video. And remember, check every rock pool. You never know which one is going to have the next amazing find. They're all amazing, but that extraordinary. Okay, they're all amazing. All rock pools are amazing. All finds are amazing. Extraordinary. The next extraordinary find. And that was extraordinary. <laughs>